हे एवरी वन एवर वंडर हाउ प्रो ट्रेडर्स स्टे इन द गेम इट्स ऑल अबाउट रिस्क मैनेजमेंट रिस्क मैनेजमेंट इन ट्रेडिंग इज एसेंशियली प्रोटेक्टिंग योर कैपिटल फ्रॉम बिग अनएक्सपेक्टेड लॉसेज इट्स नॉट अबाउट अवॉइडिंग लॉसेज एंटायरली दे आर पार्ट ऑफ द गेम बट अबाउट कंट्रोलिंग देयर साइज थिंक ऑफ इट एज योर फाइनेंशियल सीट बेल्ट इन द वॉलेटाइल वर्ल्ड ऑफ ट्रेडिंग लेट्स लुक एट स्टॉप लॉस वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पिलर्स इन द रेल्म ऑफ रिस्क मैनेजमेंट वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज अ स्टॉप लॉस द इजिएस्ट वे टू थिंक अबाउट इट इज एज एन इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी फॉर योर ट्रेड इट्स अ पेंडिंग ऑर्डर यू प्लेस दैट ऑटोमैटिकली एग्जिट्स योर पोजिशन इफ द प्राइस मूव्स अगेंस्ट यू टू अ सर्टन लेवल इमेजिन यू बाय अ स्टॉक एट हंड्रेड रुपीज होपिंग इट विल गो टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन रुपीज But what if it goes down instead? You need a plan. You might decide if this stock drops to ninety-five rupees, I want to sell and cut my losses. That ninety-five rupees level is your stop loss. This prevents a small, manageable loss from turning into a catastrophic one. In algorithmic trading, we don't do this manually. We program the system to do it for us. Now Zerodha gives us two ways to do this SL and SLM First let's talk about the stop loss limit order or SL An SL order has two prices a trigger price this is the price that wakes up your order Using our example the trigger price would be 95 When the stock hits 95 rupees your sell order is sent to the exchange A limit price This is the minimum price you are willing to accept. You might set this at say 94 rupees and 90 paise. This means when the stock hits 95 rupees, your sell order is placed, but it will only execute at 94 rupees and 90 paise or a better price, that is higher. The pro is that you have control over the exit price. The con is that if the market gaps down violently, Say from ninety-five rupees and ten paise to ninety-four rupees and fifty paise in a split second. Your order at ninety-four rupees and ninety paise might never get filled, leaving you in a losing trade. Now let's look at the stop loss market order or SLM. This one is simpler. It only has one price, a trigger price. Just like before, let's say it's ninety-five rupees. When the stock hits 95 rupees a market order to sell is instantly sent to the exchange The pro is guaranteed execution Once the trigger is hit your position will be sold at the next available price The con is something called slippage In a volatile market that next available price might be 94 rupees and 80 paise or 94 rupees and 50 paise which is lower than your trigger You get out for sure but the price might be slightly worse than you hoped so which one to use a simple rule of thumb for highly liquid stocks with low volatility an sl order is fine for more volatile stocks or when you absolutely must exit an slm order is often safer all right theory is over let's see how to actually implement this using the kite connect api i'm going to switch over to my jupiter notebook Okay let's assume we've already authenticated with Kite Connect Now imagine we've just bought 10 shares of Infosys at 1650 rupees Our trading plan says we must place a stop loss at 1630 rupees First let's place an SLM order which is the most common for guaranteed exits Let's break that down Transaction type is sell because we're exiting a long position Order type is SLM and notice the two key parameters. Trigger price is set to our stop loss level of sixteen hundred and thirty rupees, and crucially, the price is set to zero. That's how the API knows it's a market order. Now, what if we wanted to place an SL limit order instead? We want to trigger at sixteen hundred thirty rupees, but not sell for less than sixteen hundred twenty nine rupees and fifty paise. The code is very similar. See the difference? Order type is now SL and the price parameter is set to a limit price of 1629 rupees and 50 paise. This creates that small buffer we talked about. It's that simple. 
And that's a wrap on our first advanced order type. Let's quickly recap what we covered. You know the critical distinction between an SLM order for a guaranteed exit and an SL order for a price-controlled exit. And most importantly, you saw how to implement both of them using just a few lines of Python code. A cover order, or CO, is a two-legged order. It combines your initial entry order, which can be a market or limit order, and a compulsory stop-loss order. Think of it as buying a ticket to a high-speed race and the organizers tell you that you must wear a helmet. The stop-loss is your helmet. It's not optional. This is fantastic because it forces trading discipline. You cannot place a cover order without defining your exit point for a loss. Let's see how to code this. Placing a cover order is very straightforward. The main difference is we need to set the variety parameter to CO and provide a trigger price for our mandatory stop loss. And that's it. The API call looks familiar. But by setting variety to CO, we've told the broker to create that two-legged order. Once our buy order executes, a sell stop loss order will be automatically waiting. So let's recap. The cover order is a disciplined two-in-one package for your entry and mandatory stop loss, enforcing good risk management from the start. The GTT is, without a doubt, one of the most useful features Zerodha offers for swing and positional traders. A GTT is not an order that sits on the exchange. Instead, it's a trigger instruction that you give to Zerodha and it stays active on their servers for up to one year. When your trigger condition is met, Zerodha places a limit order on the exchange on your behalf. This is perfect for set it and forget it scenarios. There are two main types of GTTs. Single leg GTT. This is one trigger for one action. For example, if Infosys drops below 1,500 rupee, buy 10 shares of Infosys. Or if my stock in my holdings, say Vedanta, goes above 300 rupees, place a sell order. OCO or one cancels other GTT. In this, you can set two triggers on an existing holding, a target above the current price and a stop loss below it. If the target is hit, the stop loss trigger is automatically cancelled and vice versa. It's like a bracket order, but for your long-term investments. The API for this is different. We don't use place order. We use a special place GTT method. Let's jump into the notebook to see how it works. First, let's create a single leg GTT to buy a stock on a dip. Let's say we want to buy TCS if it ever falls to 3000 rupees. Let's break down this code. First, we define the actual order we want to place inside a list of dictionaries called orders. You can see we specify the symbol, quantity, product and the limit price inside this dictionary. Then, in the place GTT call, we set the trigger type to single and provide the trigger values. We have used the list to define the trigger value of our desired price of 3000 rupee. Then, pass in the orders list we had defined before. We also provide the last price, which is a requirement for placing GTTs. Now for the one cancels other GTT. Let's say we own shares of HDFC Bank and we want to set a target at 2300 rupees and a stop loss at 1700 rupees. For the OCO, we extend the single GTT concept. We define two orders in our orders list, one for our target at 2300 rupees and one for our stop loss at 1700 rupees. In the place GTT call, we set the trigger type to OCO and provide both trigger values in the trigger values list, corresponding to our stop loss and target. Please ensure you specify the values correctly, else it will result in an error. First, you need to specify the stop loss trigger and then the target trigger. The API then links these two orders, ensuring that if one executes, the other is automatically cancelled. Next up is the aftermarket order or AMO. This does exactly what it says. It lets you place orders after the market has closed. 
These orders are collected by the broker and sent to the exchange the next morning when the market opens. It's perfect if you've done your analysis in the evening and want to have your order ready for the next day without having to be at your screen. The code is a standard place order call, just with a different variety. It's that easy. Just change the variety to ammo and you're all set for the next trading session. Placing one massive order can move the price against you, a problem called price impact. Today, we're learning the solution, the iceberg order a specialist tool designed to execute large trades discreetly. The name Iceberg is the perfect analogy. You only show the small tip of your order to the market, while the massive chunk remains hidden. It works by taking your large parent order and breaking it into several smaller child orders, or legs. Only one leg is active on the exchange at a time. When it fills, the next one is automatically sent. To the market, it looks like a series of small, unrelated trades, which minimizes your price impact. Let's see the code. We'll buy 2,000 shares of ITC, but split into four legs. That's it. You just set the variety to iceberg, define your total quantity, and specify how many iceberg legs to split it into. The system handles the rest. So, the iceberg order is your go-to tool for executing large volumes without revealing your full intention to the market. Congratulations! You've successfully completed the course. You now have the skills to automate your strategies using Zerodha's Kite Connect. This course has provided you with all the building blocks to set up an end-to-end -end algorithmic trading system. Thank you.